Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever had the feeling that God was working in your life in a, a very special way? That the circumstances that were happening at a, at a certain time were more than just a random chance or coincidence? That time, place, people, and events all seem to line up beautifully for a very special opportunity to, to witness to the truth of God's love, to serve, to help, to encourage, to comfort, and to rejoice. Well, if you've ever felt that way, don't be too surprised. Because God can and often does use the seemingly insignificant details of our everyday lives to work for us, in us, and through us. And in today's text from Acts chapter 8, it helps us to see God's working in a very special way through the experiences of those two main characters in the story that we just heard read, Philip the Evangelist and the Ethiopian eunuch. From them, we are encouraged to learn for ourselves also that God has a time and, and task for each one of us to accomplish his good will in the lives of others. So we see that uh, before the, the words of our reading in Acts chapter 8, that Philip had been having a, a very successful ministry in Samaria, which was the region just to the north of Judea, uh, the, the main uh, area that the Jewish people lived in, where Jerusalem was located. Just to the north was uh, Samaria, where there was a, uh, a kind of mixed race people, people whose ancestors had been Israelites, but then uh, against God's will, they had intermarried with peoples from other nations. And, and so their religious beliefs were also a mixture of some belief in the true God and his word from the Old Testament, but also some worship of false gods as well. And so Philip, uh, led by the Holy Spirit, had gone to that region to bring the good news of salvation through Jesus to those people. But in spite of the successes that he was having there in Samaria, God broke into that success story and through an angel gave Philip some specific instructions. He told him to go south and to that road that goes from Jerusalem to Gaza. And then later on when he was there, he told Philip to, to run up alongside that chariot. And there's a special opportunity that God had prepared for him there. We can imagine that Philip might have been angry, disappointed and, and frustrated at this direction, that, because after all, he had been experiencing great success in sharing the gospel in Samaria. And so why would God have him go down to that wilderness area, that no man's land on that dusty desert road that led from Jerusalem, a road that uh, was hardly ever traveled, we read in, in our text, and that Presumably, as, as Philip may have thought, that those very few people who use that road would seemingly be not very likely prospects for hearing the gospel. By contrast to the, the great work that he had been doing in Samaria, sharing the gospel with the people there. And think for a minute about the Ethiopian eunuch, uh, an official in the court of Queen Candace of Ethiopia. Think about all of the events the timing that had to line up just right so that he first went to Jerusalem to worship there at the temple uh, as he was a, a believer in the true God, having come to know God through the Old Testament scriptures, the word of God. And then at just the right time, having left Jerusalem to head back uh, along the Gaza road by the, the Mediterranean Sea, down through Egypt, and eventually back to his homeland of Ethiopia, and so that he would be there on the road at just the right time when the Holy Spirit had led Philip to go there and so that they could meet together. And then for Philip, by God's guidance, to have gone to that place also at just the right time so that his path intersected with that Ethiopian official in the chariot that he was riding in. Clearly, these events were not just coincidence, but God was at work and the lives of both of those men to allow them to meet up at that particular point just as that Ethiopian official was reading that critical passage of Isaiah's prophecy about the Savior. And that's a reminder to us that uh, perhaps you've heard a, a, a famous saying that man proposes, but God 
disposes. We, we can make our plans, but that ultimately it is up to God whether the plans that we have made come to fruition or not. And we believe, as God tells us, that he is actively at work in our lives, lovingly arranging all the details of our lives so that we can enjoy life and so that we can serve him and others. And he often works things in our lives in, in very unexpected and exciting ways for us. Sometimes perhaps a, a wrong address that we got actually turns out to be the right address for some opportunity that God was preparing for us that was out of our expectation. Or perhaps a, a person in the hospital bed next to our family member that we visiting was, was just the, the person that God wanted us to meet to be able to share the comfort of God's love with them. Perhaps a, a wrong turn in, in the road that we took might lead to an, an unexpected excitement for us. Or a whole set of circumstances might work together to put us in the right place at the right time to receive a special blessing from God. Remember God's promise in, in that cherished passage, Romans 8, 28, that in all things God works for the good of those who love him who have been called according to his purpose. That's not just a, a comforting phrase, that is the truth. And it assures us that the God who cares so much about each one of us that he knows the exact number of hairs on our head and he knows when even a single hair falls out from our head, he knows when we get up and, and when we lie down, he knows all of our thoughts that this God loves us so much that he is always working in the things of our lives for our good and the good of others, the ultimate good for salvation through faith in Jesus. So probably the first thing that we need to do is to help us realize again that it is God who works in us and through us. Remember that God can and does use the, the ordinary events of our everyday lives to show his loving care and to shape our lives so that we can serve him with rejoicing. So the next time we unexpectedly find that we have a flat tire that, that delays our day, whatever we had planned to do, the next time we, we miss that, that flight that we were in a hurry to catch, the next time that we get caught in traffic and delayed, let's remember that God may be using those events to prepare us for some experience just like he prepared for Philip on that Gaza road to meet that Ethiopian official and share the message of Jesus with him. And it's also good for us to stop and think for a moment what things also we might be saved from by being delayed at unexpected times. We will never know what might happen if, if we had not been delayed by missing that flight or by that flat tire or by whatever disruption of our schedule. While we certainly don't live with a, an, an alarmist or fearful mindset, we should also take time to reflect on the fact that God in his care for us is also protecting us from harm and danger, and sometimes using unexpected circumstances in order to bring about that protection for us. But God has a time for us. And so we praise him for that perfect timing that he has planned out for us throughout our lives. We also focus on the fact that he has a special task, or, or many tasks throughout our lives, also prepared for us at, at just those right times that he has prepared. And so as we read from Acts chapter 8, uh, Philip the evangelist didn't know exactly what specific task God had in mind when, he, when God instructed him to leave Samaria and to go set out on that Gaza road. He probably still didn't even know exactly what God had in mind when he saw that Ethiopian official riding in that chariot along that dust, dusty road, but that task developed throughout the course of those events. And, and by God's instruction, Philip was jogging al alongside the chariot, and he heard the Ethiopian official reading. At that time, it was more common for reading, even when you were by yourself, to be done out loud rather than silently. So he heard that Ethiopian official reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. And as he heard them reading those verses, he, he knew 
what the opportunity was that God had prepared for him. And so he started with a question. Do you understand what you are reading? And the Ethiopian official replied that, that, well, how can I understand without someone explaining it to me? And so he invited Philip up into the chariot to ride along with him and to explain to him the, the meaning of those verses from Isaiah's prophecy that he had read from that wonderful chapter about the Savior Jesus, Isaiah 53. And so it's very clear to us what that mission was that God was arranging that day for Philip. And whatever his background of understanding of the faith of the Old Testament, whatever experience he had just had in Jerusalem, where he had just finished worshiping, he was nevertheless unable to comprehend the meaning of those verses from Isaiah chapter 53. He simply didn't know what the prophet Isaiah was talking about. And so he asked another simple question of Philip. Who is the prophet speaking about, himself or about someone else? And there it was in that question that God was opening the door of opportunity for Philip to tell this man the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the Savior that God had promised through all the prophets of the Old Testament, including those verses that the man just happened to be reading. And it probably would also be good for us at this point to review what it was exactly that Philip was about to share with that Ethiopian official. So those words of the, the prophet Isaiah that the Ethiopian official read are, are maybe also a little bit confusing for us as well. It's in that chapter that Isaiah is again depicting the suffering servant, the servant of God, the Savior that God would send, who would suffer for our salvation, who voluntarily, willingly came into this world with that mission of laying down his life, of, of suffering and dying to save the people whom God loves so dearly. Just as the prophet Isaiah writes, as a sheep who is led to the slaughter, does not open its mouth, so the Savior, when he is being led away to his death, also would not open his mouth to protest or complain, but he went to that faith willingly out of love for us and desire to save us. This is what Isaiah had foretold when he said, he will not cry out or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. So we see that fulfilled when Jesus was brought before the high priest and, and falsely accused, and he did not speak up to defend himself when he was then brought before the Roman governor, Pontius Pilate, and, and again falsely accused and, and did not speak up to defend himself when he was also brought uh, before King Herod, King Herod Antipas, and again falsely accused. Again, he said nothing. He was determined to bear up under those false accusations and to go to, to the cross on Golgotha to suffer and die for the sins of the whole world. That was his task. That was the mission for which he had been born into this world. To take that judgment that we sinful people deserved upon himself and to pay for all of our sins by his death on the cross. So that we who were born dead in our transgressions and sins would instead, by his grace, receive everlasting life. Because of our sins, the Bible tells us that a great chasm was, was separating us from our Heavenly Father. Our sins were like a barrier that prevented us from having the harmonious relationship with our Heavenly Father that God desires for us. But through that sacrifice of Jesus our Savior, that barrier of sin has been broken down, that, that gulf or chasm of sin has, has been removed, a bridge has been formed over it by Jesus' work, so that we now have harmony with God our Father. We are his dearly loved children because of the work of our Savior Jesus. As Isaiah prophesied, on him was laid all of our iniquity. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. By his wounds, we have been healed. All this was the message that Philip was, was blessed by God to be able to share with that Ethiopian official on that day on the Gaza Road. And not just this section of God's word, but 
Our reading tells us that he explained from the Old Testament, meant from many other passages, that Jesus is the Savior that God had promised to send. That because of his death on the cross, because of his resurrection from the dead, we have the sure and certain hope of eternal life with God in heaven. And how about us? What about the, the special tasks that God has prepared for us? Well, as we said in the children's message, our task probably will not be quite so uh, dramatic as the one that God had prepared for Philip with, with God sending an angel to, to tell us to go uh, out to a certain place and God has a person in mind that he will come and, and make our paths intersect so that we can share the gospel with them. Probably God won't speak directly to us like that. But we may discover rather unexpected opportunities that God has prepared for us in our lives where we recognize that there is a, a, a perfect opportunity where someone is, is asking us about the hope that we have, the confidence that we have, the comfort and, and, and strength that we have from knowing the forgiveness of our sins through Jesus our Savior. And we trust that, as God promises, he is preparing opportunities for each one of us in our lives to do just that, to share this message of his love, his forgiveness, his salvation, with the people that he has placed around us in our lives. And so whenever it is that God has prepared those times for us, with great joy we can share with those people who need to hear it, the message of God's love for them and for all the people of the world through Jesus our Savior. And what happens when that time of, of our task is ended, when it is completed? We see that uh, in this instance with Philip, when he had finished sharing the good news about Jesus with that Ethiopian official, the Holy Spirit miraculously took him away from that place, just as apparently miraculously he had gone there and, and met that man at that time. Now God led him away to another place to continue sharing the good news of Jesus with other people in other places. And so the same is true for us as well. Even, even though we might not always see the results of, of the gospel message that we share with others, even if sometimes we do see an immediate rejection of the message that we share. We know that God has prepared other opportunities for us as well to share this good news of his love with other people. And so just as Philip did, just as the Ethiopian eunuch did, we go on our way rejoicing, trusting that no matter what, if, if the results are immediate of, of a person accepting and believing and rejoicing in the message of salvation, or if perhaps uh, we never see the results in this life until we get to heaven. We rejoice at simply having that opportunity, being used by God to share this eternal life-giving message with others. And so we pray each day, dear God, please open my eyes to see the opportunities you give to me. And when those opportunities come, please give me boldness, Give me wisdom. Guide me by your spirit to proclaim your truth to those people with whom you want me to share it. And then after we proclaim it, we pray also, dear God, please work in their hearts and bring them to believe and to have the confidence of salvation just as we do.